Hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like at the clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. We got Peyton on the radio here in the... Uh, so we're doing... Wow, well, we're doing division... Uh, last one I did, we did... What did we do? East, right? Yeah, I think we did the East last time. Yeah. And then I did an East, and it didn't get much love. Go check out what uh, the professor and Steele like about the east too that was a great video i'll let you wait till after this one and then go watch it but you can watch ours too if you haven't watched it i can't no i don't know why you wouldn't have watched it by now but there might be some people out there that haven't um so, uh so peyton we are uh you by the way you just put out a video on yours peyton on the radio if you haven't checked it out go subscribe to peyton on the radio he's fantastic also part of the Steel Flyers network that we're doing now, and uh, that's going to be amazing. You just put out a video right now. What was that video about? Um, it was me uh, reviewing the Vancouver Canucks offseason as we're getting so close to uh, the new season um, on, like, the last three reviewing teams, Vegas, and then the video that me and you did, the Winnipeg Jets, which uh, should be coming up later on this weekend. Yeah, and actually we did Vancouver together too, so you can watch that too. Mm -hmm. that, that's a lot of good, getting a lot of love. People are liking that one. So. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we're going to do the West Division today. And at first glance, I thought with this division that it was pretty much a no-brainer. But as I got into it, I started wondering maybe if it's not so much of, as much of a no-brainer as I thought. Uh, there are a couple teams where... I don't know. They could kind of end up anywhere. And you yeah. know, as well as I do, we're going to do all these. And then there's going to be some crazy stuff happen. They'd be like, how did that happen? Right? It always happens every year. So, but every it's year. fun. It's fun doing it anyways. By the way, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button for me, too. Everybody hits the subscribe button for everybody else, and they kind of leave me in the lurch and forget to, you know, don't. It's okay. You're not going to get the COVID. Also, Comment down. Tell me what your picks are. We want to know what your picks are. What do you think you got for the West here? Comment down there in the comment section. But we're going to start from the last place team, and we're going to work our way up to the top. Is there eight teams in this division? Is that right? I think, I think there is, yeah. yeah. Eight teams in this division. Okay. So let's start. Yeah. Number eight. What do we got for number the eighth place team? I'll tell you. Tell me yours, and I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you mine. I'm going to go with uh, the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, I just don't think they're that good of a team this year. They're young. They're improving. Uh, next year, they'll probably be a lot better, but I think uh, I see them taking last place in this division. Yeah, I got to go with Anaheim, too. Um, mostly because I saw Gibson's uh, last, at the end of last year look very frustrated. Um, they haven't really did much to improve their team over last year. So I don't think that frustration is going to go away too fast. Even as far as having Miller back, like it's pretty, what what did they bring? Uh, um, Shattenkirk. That's really the only major addition, which is going to help their power play, which was mm -hmm. porous, porous last year. But I think for the most part, you may agree with me. I think Anaheim this year is going to start really doing the rebuild, don't you? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, you got a lot of older players that they're they're staying loyal to, like Getzlaff, and I think he's on his last year of his deal this upcoming season. So um, you're definitely going to be seeing a lot of changes there in Anaheim um, with back is coming off the books. You're going to see a lot of the younger players to uh, start taking over this team, especially with Lindholm and Madsen. Um, they're having two years left on their contract. So you might be seeing those guys being trade bait unless they want to rush that rebuild. But uh, they got a lot of good young players to really complement this rebuild. For example, like Trevor Zegers that we've seen over the World Juniors, um, who won MVP. He was absolutely fantastic. His hands were nuts. I, I don't think anyone... Um, could say his hands were nuts. It, it was nuts the way he was handling that puck out there and it could be a future top-line centerman for the Anaheim Ducks. So uh, I think they're definitely heading into a rebuild and this year will definitely be one of their lower years um, and probably will be having a top-five pick in this year's draft. Yeah, I agree. And that's probably good for them. I mean, even there, they do have young players, but most of their young players are like 
third line type yeah. guys. They don't. The good for them that Trevor Zegers has progressed as well as they have because that's kind of a saving grace for them. By the way, I'm just going to be posting out something with uh, Delhi or uh, Delhi tweets or Anthony Shardelli, writer for the Anaheim Ducks. We talk a lot about Zegers in the World Juniors, so you might want to check that out. So I have the same as you. Anaheim is my eighth place mm-hmm. team in this division as well. I think it's good for them. I want them to, you know, it's it would be good for them to get a high draft pick this year. Really get, so. really get this rebuild rolling. Well, and, and especially uh, in this draft where there's a lot of top two defensemen out there, a lot of people are talking about Owen Power this uh, this next coming draft, right? He's a big time defenseman, and Anaheim really doesn't have that future defensive prospect coming right. along. So uh, I think yeah. it'd be a perfect guy, Owen Power, for the Anaheim Ducks if, of course, they're able to get that and win the lottery. Yeah, yeah, but uh, there's a there's several. There's like four defensemen in the top ten this year. Like defensemen mm-hmm. are it's a defense defense heavy, and there's that Ratu if they decide to go with another centerman from Finland who looks fantastic as well. So let's get to our next one that maybe be looking at the draft as well. <laughs> well, if if they're going by our numbers, what do we say number seven in this? So uh, I'm going to go a little bit, probably different. You'll probably disagree with me on this one, but I'm going to go with sixth place. I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Kings. Um, I love the team. I love the way that they're building it, of course, with picking up on Anthony CU. I still see this team as a developing team. I know you say that Velarde is going to jump up this year, and I think he will as well. Uh, I don't know if this team is going to be ready, and this team could pr- totally prove me wrong, and they could totally jump up in the standings and maybe even take that last spot because we all know this this kind of division that we're going to be looking at is top-heavy, and then the rest is just whoever is playing the hottest at the time. Um, there's still big questions with Jonathan Quick, whether he'll stay healthy or not, if Peterson will take over the starting job, if their defensive core is going to be strong enough. Their only strong defenseman this year is Ali Mata. Drew Doughty had a really bad season last year. One of his worst on his new contract. Um, their offense, not looking too bad with Velarde. Blake Lizotte, not looking too bad last year either. Um, but I don't see them going much further than a sixth place finish. Maybe even a fifth if they play better than Arizona. But I see them taking that spot. So you're taking seventh spot? You're putting seventh, them in the seventh spot? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll talk about L.A. when I get to L.A., but I'm going with the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, I, they're just, if you just look at their top, uh, their depth chart, it's, I don't know, Rick Tockett play is going to keep on playing that. Everybody crowd around the goaltender and block shots because Darcy Kemper is our saving grace, which he is. I mean, mm-hmm. if I was a coach, I don't know if I would do it any differently than that because you got to go with your strength. The Darcy Kemper is your only true strength. You get it. For them to even come close to the playoffs, Clayton Keller is going to have to have a breakout season this year. And I just don't see that happening when Nick Schmaltz is your number one center. Uh, Connor Garland, who has, you know, is a gamer, you know, good young, uh, good young player, small, but plays tough. I like him. But you want him as your top line left winger? No. Uh, Lawson Krause up there, Dvorak. There's nothing on this lineup. Barrett Hayton is probably never going to be what they expected him to be. Um, Barrett Hayton looks like he might be a second line left winger somewhere down the road. Um, it's and he's too young at 20 years old. Phil Kessel for his career is almost over already. It really is. Uh, we'll we'll see if he proves this wrong, but I don't think so. The, uh, that offensive depth to me is. So bad. Uh, Christian Fisher uh, right now would probably be their second line right winger. On most teams, he'd be on the fourth line if if playing at all. Um, I will say that they still have a, an analytics good defense in, in mm-hmm. Demers, Larson, Chikrin. I love Chikrin, Goligoski, but all these guys are on one years. And they're probably going to play hard for you. But nobody, you're not going to produce many points anymore out of these guys. Goligoski is going to be 36 years old. Uh, it's basically all Kemper and Ranta if they can stay healthy. Yeah. Drake Kajula they got. Uh, if they have injuries, you're going to have guys playing way over their head here. I just can't see. Um, in fact, I think Armstrong is doing this, all these trades, everything. He's going rebuild, and that's it. 
This is going to be a rebuild year, pretty much a tank. I can even see Anaheim really beating them out. The more I talk about it, I can see Arizona being last in this division as well. Yeah, I totally agree with you, which is why I put them on uh, the the sixth spot for my division, because I think they're not going to be that far away from L.A. or Anaheim. I think those three teams will be pretty close to each other. Um, But the reason why I put Arizona in the sixth spot, and I was even thinking to put them on the fifth spot just because of their defense court and uh, Darcy Kemper. Darcy Kemper is a game changer for that Arizona Coyotes oh, crew. Absolutely. He honestly was when it was came to playoff time and they were playing against Nashville and even against Colorado. I know they got destroyed against Colorado, but a lot of the times the reason why they were close was Darcy Kemper. Darcy Kemper saved them so many times. And I could see this team being a rebuilding team. Um, it really sucks. I, I loved Barrett Hayton when he got drafted and how... He was hyped up to be a pretty big player there for Arizona. But the problem with Arizona is that they are horrible with prospect management. They play their prospects too quick. They rush them. And, and then they regret it. Because and then you have a player like this in Barrett Hayton who might just spend maybe the rest of his career on the third line if he doesn't develop, right? So um, I'm going to put Arizona in sixth place. They could even go lower if, of course, injuries happen to them and they don't get players producing like a Keller or Garland again. Was Garland just having a one-off year? Is he going to go right back down to what he used to be? Um, but yeah, that's where I put the Arizona Coyotes in the the, sp- the sixth spot. Okay, well, my sixth spot, um, I have the San Jose Sharks. Um, but I will say that I'm... Out of all of these, I'm probably most tentative about the San Jose Sharks. Uh, I I could see them going higher. I could even see them making the playoffs. Mostly because this Nabokov seems to be the goalie whisperer. Yeah. Uh, he has done, he did great things with Jones and Dell. Uh, when he came in, He they looked like different goaltenders almost immediately. And now you're going to have Dubnik in there, and if he can sp- speak whatever he speaks into goaltenders to Dubnik and get him back on the train again, who knows what could happen. I mean, their defense is pretty poor, uh, but you still got a lot of offense with Carlson and Burns. Burns doesn't look like he's getting any older. He seems to keep on going. Uh, Carlson has had time to heal his body. He could have a, he could have, he could have a, a resurgent year, it's possible. I mean, he was one of the best, if not the best defenseman in the league for, for quite a few years. So, um, and then they have some younger players that you know, on defense that could step up. Their offense, though, their top six is pretty good. Um, if Kane could, is probably a late, groomer, a late bloomer as far as a, a maturity is concerned, if he can mature and... Uh, uh, and Hurdle can have a, break, a, a a good year. Meyer can have a turnaround year. I could see San Jose actually making the playoffs. But until I see it, I'm putting them here. I have, that's a lot of things to happen. Plus, Bugner is going to have, have had one year already with them, and uh, now he's going to have another year. You know, he's He's been able to work with the team, so they might be able to be better than they were before. But until I see it, I'm putting San Jose here. See, I agree with you on that. Like, I think San Jose could possibly jump up in that that playoff spot, which is why I put them in that that fifth spot, just right outside, right beside Minnesota. Because, like we said, like, this division is so tough, like, for the bottom feeder teams to kind of, like, organize. Because, like, they're all the same. They really are. They're all the same. And you could see different teams maybe improving more. And this is a new team that has... A new coach in Bob Booner. Um, he he's gonna have his kind of his first full year with the team now, um, and I think it's gonna help them. Uh, injuries last year was really hard. They lost Kutcher and Hurdle. They had no centers last year. They were injured. Uh, they have Marlowe back on the team. Yes, their defense doesn't look too great, but like if you were saying, if Nabokov works his magic with Jones and Devin Dumnik, this team could totally look like what it used to be. Um, now, we are maybe totally not thinking that. Um, you never know. Maybe that Ryan Donato kid that they picked up from Minnesota as well and maybe changes his self around and is actually able to start playing good hockey. Um, there's a lot of questions with San Jose, and uh, there's 
I don't. I, it, it's a big question on whether or not they're going to be able to um, stay healthy with Couture and Hurdle and the rest of their players because that's been the biggest question from them last year. Was this team was predicted to be in the playoffs last year even, but then injuries hit them and Carlson and Vlasic and they started um, kind of having that downtrend a little bit in their age, especially Vlasic. And you're right, Brent Burns hasn't shown any decline. He's still the same old Brent Burns putting up the same offensive points. Not as great as what he used to be. His age has definitely taken a little bit of a toll on his skating and stuff like that. But Brent Burns is still a lethal guy out there when you put him on a great power play and when he's playing alongside some great players, which San Jose still has. They still got Evander Kane, who could probably still put up probably another good 20 goals this season. You still got Hurdle, who, when healthy, is almost a point per game. You got Timu Meyer, who is still looking great. Couture, who is a great leader for this San Jose club. I'm going to put him in fifth, and they could even slot into a, a playoff spot if they play better than what uh, Minnesota or St. Louis or any of the other teams. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, they're, they're definitely a wild card for me. So my fifth, I have the Minnesota Wild. And um, that's just simply because I do believe this, there's about an energy. And I'll, I'll talk about this when we get up to the Blues and the possibility that I could see San Jose moving up. But um, I think most people are starting to realize that what – even the players, maybe not the players, I don't know, are starting to realize that they're on the cusp of a rebuild here. Most of the moves that they made were looking like rebuild-type moves, uh, getting guys that are, that are unrestricted free agents. Now, I don't think that was the only reason why he did it. He also did it because I think he wants to keep Dumba and protect four next year for the expansion mm -hmm. and then only have to protect four forwards which is going to be a fight like Jordan Greenway if he can turn things around and stuff like that. I'm taking Minnesota here because I want to see – there's so many ifs. Can Jordan Greenway show what he was supposed to be up until now? Uh, Ryan Hartman has been just absolute poop the last couple of years. Like, uh, can Joel Erickson act be the second-line center that they need this year? Otherwise, they don't really have – much of a center in their lineup, like Nick Benino is going to have to play up there too high. Um, is Zach Parise going to get injured again? Um, yeah, so many, so many question marks for me. I do like their defense. I have question marks about Ta Cam Talbot. So do you. He could have a turnaround season. But as a whole, I just think this is a mishmash of uh, mishmash. And I do, for the most part, think Garen is leading to a rebuild, to retool and trading a lot of these pieces away. That's the only reason why I have them out right now. So uh, I have Minnesota. It's kind of funny. It's like every time you talk about a team, I place it up a little higher. And yeah. I got Minnesota well at number four. Um, and the reason why I have this team at number four is their defense. And um, as a defenseman I uh, myself, I love watching defense. Suter. Um, yes, he's declining a bit, but still uh, oh, a great defensive defenseman. Uh, Spurgeon, one of the best defensemen in the entire NHL. One of the most underrated defensemen in the yeah. NHL. This guy is a stud. This is why he's making $7.5 million, is because he's one of the best defensemen for the Minnesota Wild. Jonas Brodin, one of the best defensive defensemen, but also has an offensive game to him as well. Matt Dumpa. Eh, he's a, a little bit overrated, but still a very solid defenseman. And then you have one of the best top six pairings in the league and Carson Saucy and Greg Pattern. This team reminds me a lot of like a Nashville Predators type of team. A very solid defense core. Now, they definitely don't have like a Pekka Rene. They got a Cam Talbot and a Capo Kalkinen. But still, that's pretty damn good. Cam Talbot, if he has a resurgence, you can see this team totally taking that four spot. And the first couple of games for Minnesota is not too bad. They got to go up against LA, Anaheim, and San Jose. So it's all those kind of like kind of lower bottom feeder teams. And if they take advantage of those early teams, those early matchups, Minnesota can easily jump into a playoff spot. Now, their biggest question is their offense. Can guys like Buxad, Benino, they're kind of their top centermen, is what they're talking about. Can those guys jump up? And also, Kirill Kapazov and Kevin Fiola. 
how well will those guys produce for the Minnesota Wild going into the season? Like you were saying as well with Greenway and Eric Sinek, how well will they jump up into the season as well? Um, offense is going to be a big question for Minnesota, and they might not come very much. But defense is going to be one of the biggest things that I think is going to push the Minnesota Wild into a playoff spot. Yeah, okay. I mean, I could definitely see all of those things. And this is where it gets kind of muddy. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if Minnesota does better than they do. Uh, But all of these teams seem to have, like, a lot of question marks uh, all the way, like, all the way up so far. Um, For my making the playoffs, and I know you obviously don't agree because you were lower, (laughs) but I have L.A. making the playoffs. And um, to tell you the honest truth, it's not because I look on paper and say this team should make the playoffs. It's it's not that. It's this um, McKinnon or not McKinnon. Uh, McClellan has got amazing team system going here for LA. Um, he's getting the most out of the parts that he has here. And um, Michael, like Matt Roy, very they got a lot of very underrated pieces here that are playing extremely well for him and that's really the only reason why um i think turcotte may come up and play a little bit um i love gabriel velarde i don't know why they have him as a third line center here what are you talking about he's gonna be playing the second line center all day and um i i just think their overall team play is going to push them into that spot plus there's a lot of questions about you know anderson dolan how's he going to do uh, i don't think quinn byfield is going to play either i think alex turcott will play before he was arthur kaliev looks like he's only i think arthur kaliev is really only going to be a third liner in the league so i think he can play now and his upside is not huge but his ability to play now is there like he's six He's uh, 6'2", 190. I I think that's off. I think it looks like he's gained even more weight than that. So I think these guys are going to play. And, like, it's – I can't explain in any other way, but their overall team play, it's kind of like the Columbus Blue Jackets. You look at their roster and go, they shouldn't make the playoffs, but they're going to. Yeah, and I think that's going to be a lot of, like, part of this West division – is you're going to see a lot of teams just you you might be surprised but who knows maybe Arizona will make it in there and LA they could totally possibly make it in there I, I remember McClellan with the Edmonton Oilers and how great of a coach he is especially with San Jose he could bring more stuff out of those players that you really might not expect very much out of but he'll bring more out of those players so I guess I'll jump on to uh, number three where I have uh, the St. Louis Blues. Um, the St. Louis Blues, uh, I think, could be a, a lot higher if um, they didn't have injuries. Tarasenko, of course, being out of lineup is the biggest one for me. Not having him in there will lower the odds. But if you get a Mike Hoffman back in the lineup, that'll make them a lot better. But you you automatically know you might make it into the playoffs since the division otherwise is pretty weak. Now, don't expect that it's going to be a piece of cake because... Teams could totally upset you, and St. Louis might be out of the playoffs, but I don't see that. I see St. Louis uh, finishing in third. I think their defense still looks as great. Vince Dunn is a very underrated defenseman for the amount of money he's making this upcoming year. Um, Their defense core with Scandella, Crew, Paracco, and Falk is a very good, capable top four. Benetton, if he has a bounce-back season from what he did last year, I think he'll do very good. And Huso, um, he will be making his debut. Hopefully, he will pan out for the St. Louis Blues, but otherwise, I like their offense. Um, I like their defense. I think they're going to be easily placed third um, in the uh, the West Division. I have them third too, but I have a I have an asterisk beside it because I I honestly think you could almost I'm on, I'm tempted to switch the Blues and the Sharks. I think the Blues can fall down real bad, and the reason why is just what you brought about Huso and Bennington has to show it. He had a poor mm-hmm. year. If Bennington does not progress, they're screwed. Like, I they don't are. care what the rest of your lineup is, you're done. And this year when goaltending is going to be so important, they are putting a lot of marbles in one player that didn't have a good year last year. 
So I'm putting them there tentatively, assuming that Bennington has a rebound here. And I still think they're going to do something with that goaltending. I don't think they're going to put that much pressure on Huso. I think they're going to bring somebody else in somewhere along the way here. So I'm putting them there for now. But I almost had San Jose up in this spot and the Blues missing the playoffs. I just about did. So it's to me, it's really close there. Um, but it's hard to it's hard to go against their depth on forward. Like it, it really is. It really is. They're really, they're crazy depth, and especially if they pick up Mike Hoffman, and then later on in the season, if they do get Tarasenko back in lineup, man, that's a crazy good roster. When you add Tarasenko back in that roster. And having Robert Thomas as your second line centerman, I really love Robert Thomas, and I think he will. He he did great last year for the St. Louis Blues, and he's just overall getting better and better. And you might see him take another step up as yeah. the St. Louis Blue this upcoming season. Um, yeah. But honestly, a great player. Um, yeah. I guess we'll yeah, jump on to. I guess you go ahead. Number two. Number two. Yeah. What's Perfect. Your um, I'm going to go with the Vegas Golden Knights on this one. Um, I thought this was a pretty easy choice. I like Vegas. You could even put St. Louis ahead of Vegas, honestly, uh, looking more at the depth charts um, of both teams. But the reason why I have Vegas ahead is because of Robin Lehner and Marc-Andre Fleury. Just the goaltending is honestly better than what St. Louis is. Not just that, you have a very, very strong defense core with Petrangelo and McNabb. Uh, great top two. Then you got Martinez, Shea, uh, uh, Theodore, uh, Haig, White Cloud. White Cloud showed up very good for the Vegas Golden Knights last year, even though he didn't play a lot of games. Um, still a very solid defenseman. Then you also have Nick Holden as well. Um, their offensive core is a bit weaker depth-wise. Uh, Alex Tuck was injured a lot of last year. Same with Cody Glass. So if you have those guys staying healthy and producing for you, you could have a very good depth uh, with Glass and Tuck. Stevenson, on the other hand, as your second line centerman is a little sketchy, but if you have Glass develop into a guy who can produce a decent amount of points for your team, then that's great. Now you have a second line centerman and Cody Glass, which is what they're expecting from Cody is to be that second line guy for that team. But you might see Stevenson and Stevenson actually did very well, I think, alongside of Stone. And I think they're going to continue that combination the Stevenson very well analytically defensively and same with stone. And if they play that type of style of game where they're going to be focusing a lot of defense, which they are, I think they're going to be focusing a lot on defense this upcoming season. I think they'll easily take that second place spot. If they deal with injuries, you could totally see them fall and St. Louis jump up into that second place spot. But I have Vegas uh, finishing in second. Yeah, um, well, Chandler Stevenson, he's a shutdown center, right? Yeah. That's really what yes. he is. So you got – that's what they're doing with that lineup. And Mark Stone doesn't care if his offense suffers to play that role. Mm -hmm. They're going to be playing against other teams' top lines every every game. That's really what they're all about, which frees up that line of Carlson, Marcia, so, and Smith. Riley Smith is also one of the best analytics guys out there, too. I mean, he, He's a fantastic uh, defensive player, too. So they got a lot of good defensive forwards. Uh, that, um, But I, ideally, you really don't want Chandler Stevenson there. And if they have any injuries to Carlson or Cody Glass, who has been known to get injured, they could be in some trouble up the middle for sure. But I'm with you. The main thing here is Robin Lehner is a beast. You just can't, you know, he can make up for a lot of holes in your lineup. And yeah. uh, so... I'm going with them as they got enough offense for a guy like Robin Lehner for sure. Robin Lehner could take a sec, a lesser team than this. We, you know, we could go down further. You, you could take a lesser team than this and make it in and still be second or make the playoffs. He's that yeah. good of a goaltender. So I'm with really you on is. that. So obvious. Let's go to the one like the like it was a big secret. Number one. Colorado Avalanche, I think we both went for this one. This was an easy one. Um, one of the best teams in the NHL. Now, they do keep losing in the playoffs, but I think this year could be possibly the year for the Colorado Avalanche. They have, if they place first, they're going to be play either facing Minnesota, San Jose, Arizona, and those are easy teams to beat. And then you're going to be either facing Vegas or St. Louis, which last year Vegas... I mean, they didn't look too bad. They were really well defensively. 
I think, honestly, Colorado could take any one of these teams. I think Colorado will probably want to have, will have one of the best years this year. Um, Burakovsky had a great year last year, great rebound. He's actually turned into the player that he was talked about being. Um, now, Ranton was injured last year. I think Landeskog is dealing with an injury right now as well. Um, same with Brandon Sad, from what it says on Cat Friendly. Um, but with the addition of Sad getting into the lineup, not just that Devin Taves, who looks fantastic analytically and what a steal of a trade for the New York Islanders. Um, not just that, Philip Grubauer and Frank Coons. Now, they might be possibly looking for another goalie um, as Frank Coons and Grubauer. They've been dealing with some injuries with those two goalies. Um, but honestly, this team all up and down the roster, it's it, it looks beautiful. I love this roster. I don't think you could. This is the definition of analytics. You look all up and down this roster, and you can look at each and every player and say that player is really great analytically, like a Nikushkin, who his analytics are insane. Uh, defensively, he's insane. I love this team here in Colorado. This is a Stanley Cup favorite this year, and uh, I'm giving them that first place spot. Yeah, um, we were talking before they did this, that depth is one of, going to be one of the most important things this year, which has me wondering about my L.A. pick, actually. But uh, <laughs> that none of these teams have a lot of depth, but really, overall, I mean, if Vegas gets hurt in up the middle, they got nothing to replace it. Uh, we could go on with all the other ones, how their depth have problems, but Colorado doesn't. I mean, if they mm -hmm. have injuries, they got Martin Coates. He, he mm -hmm. was freaking amazing last year when they put him in the lineup. Like if he, uh, it's almost a shame he's on here because he could he, he he could play now already, and he's just a young guy. Connor Timmons played in the playoffs. He can take over Ian Cole. You can Mitch and match that way. Uh, Sheldon Drees has got great analytics. Uh, Drees, I think, is actually how it said, but he's got great analytics. Keith for sure would did well when he was up. They got lots of guys. Bowen Byram. I mean, on and on and on. The depth. This lineup is set up perfect for a year it like really this. They're about to going to have right now. If, if it's almost got to the point, it's almost to me. If Colorado doesn't make it to the finals this year in the West, it's going to be a disappointment. It will That's, be. Yeah, it's it will be a disappointment if they don't make it this year. It will be a big disappointment if they don't make it past the second round. They, it, It's a necessity for them that they have to make it to the conference finals and, and possibly even the Stanley Cup. This is a team that should be winning Stanley Cups by now. This is a team that's ready for it, I think. Sad, I think, is that last, and Devin Taves as well. And Kale Maker, I think he gave him another year to develop. This team is ready. This team is ready for a Big cop run, people. Be ready for the Colorado Avalanche. And if not, well, I guess we'll be eating our words. And Nate McKinnon will be pretty upset again because he was upset last year. Be ready for Nate McKinnon to rip this league up alongside of Connor McDavid because Nate McKinnon wasn't very happy with the way Colorado played in that last round last year. So expect Colorado to really bring their A game this upcoming season. Uh, this could be the best top six in the league on defense. Maybe the best forward depth, on, like the best team period. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, well, on our way out, watch for Crawford at the deadline. Yes. Yeah. Watch absolutely. for. Well, he's been dealing with some issues himself, so I don't know if he's going to be even playing this year. He hasn't even made it to training camp, I think, for New Jersey. Oh, really? He's, been dealing, he's actually oh. been dealing with some problems, I think, with. Uh, personal issues. I'm not too sure what's going on with Crawford, but I seen it the other day uh, where Corey Crawford was having some issues. So maybe Corey Crawford might not be the guy for the Colorado Avalanche, but uh, he hasn't been at camp. Uh, he's been given some personal days. So he might be back probably most likely. I didn't even know that. Thing. Well, that's why we have you on. Well, boys and girls, that's our full 42. We actually went a little bit long, but you guys don't mind because you got nothing else better to do but listen to us babble about who's going to win the West, right? That's why you're here. I don't have anything better to do. That's why I'm doing it. Uh, Peyton on the radio. Check out his uh, stuff. www.steelflyers.com. All sports radio. It's going to be the best website in the whole universe. Damn have a great nice. day. <laughs> That's our full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.